Welcome to the Business of Apparel podcast. This is the place to learn how to start and scale your own apparel brand and fill it with loyal customers for years to come. I'm your host, Rachel Erickson, owner and CEO of Unmarked Street, and I can't wait to share this episode with you. Welcome back to the Business of Apparel podcast. Today, I wanted to walk you through one of the top questions that I've gotten at Unmarked Street since starting my business. And while we talk a lot here about, at the Business of Apparel, obviously, about apparel, and we get tons of great questions from the community on you know, how do we develop apparel? How do we run our fittings? How do we go through production? How do we find factories and manufacturing partners? We've had a lot of different questions from the community, but the number one most consistent question that I get asked over and over again, ironically, is about my PMP certification. So today I wanted to take a moment and talk a little bit about the PMP certification, let you know what it is, how you can get yours, and if I think that it was really helpful for me in my career, because that's kind of the two-part question that I get asked the most. Number one, do I think it was worth it to go through all of the hustle to go through and get that certification? And number two, how do you do it then if you want to go ahead and proceed yourself? So today I have up with me a little bit of a cheat sheet. I've got the PMI Institute's website up here on my screen with me. So I'm going to be cheating and looking at this every once in a while. But if you want to go to PMI, just those three letters, PMI.org, that is the organization that you are going to look into if you are looking to get professionally and authentically PMP certified. So that is the place you wanna go. Now, the PMI stands for the Project Management Institute and it is a global organization. There are 1.4 million different people across the globe right now who have their PMP certification. And so this is something that I'm, I'm just reading some of their stats on their website right now. It is also something that really helps people grow their careers and get better salaries. So this stat that's right here on their homepage for the PMP certification information says that the median salary for PMP holders in the U.S., goes 32% higher if you have your PMP certification, and that number goes 16% higher globally. So, and that's just compared to people without their certification. Now, if you're interested in becoming a project manager, which is what PMP stand for, stands for, it is your project management professional certification. And if you're interested in becoming a, an official project manager, there are several different ways to do it. A lot of people are out there talking about Six Sigma. That is definitely kind of something that you can do. We talk about getting our black belt in Six Sigma. So that's a different route that you can take. You can also layer some of these certifications on top of each other. You can be certified in Scrum. You can become a scrum master. And that's a different kind of project management style that you can get yourself into. And there's so many different ways that you can then apply your project management certification to a role that you might have. I will definitely say that in the apparel industry, it was really foreign to me, the idea of project managers at all. And if you're coming from a different industry and you happen to be listening to this podcast, just know that as a fashion designer, there are wishes and wants out there in our industry where like I have literally been in the room in the meeting with people in the fashion industry and we have turned to each other and said, gosh, I wish there was a document that we could like create and make everybody sign so that this project would have to go a certain way. And if anybody wanted to change it, we needed to make them write it down and explain why. And so we were having this desire for project management we didn't even know what it was. We didn't even know that that was an option out there. So I will say that there are probably many industries that are out there as well who have a desire to have some sort of organization around the daily, weekly, monthly, annual work that they do. And they don't understand that there is a way to do it. There's a certification for it. There are people that you can hire to make sure that they that everything goes off without a hitch. And those changes that you do then want to make to a project once everyone signed off on it can be recorded and can be monitored to make sure that as you move forward as a group, everything continues to move forward in a positive way and in a better way. So I will definitely say it was an interesting finding for me when I started to really get into what I wanted to do with my career. I think it was 2018, and we had a new leadership team coming into us at Specialize, and I was being challenged to kind of figure out what I wanted my role to be. 
And this was a really special time because to be we were kind of calling me like the apparel department ninja at the time. I knew a little bit about everything. I'd been at the company long enough to know how many different departments needed to be involved in everything we were doing. I was a little bit tied to marketing, to product management, definitely to development and technical design. And so there was this notion of like, how do we take everything that I know, not just about our department, but about how the company works and how intricate all of the different systems work together and how all of the different teams have to come together at different times of the year. How do we take that knowledge and really put it into a role that makes sense for me? And while at one point we really thought that like calling me the apparel ninja would have been a cool title and something fun to put on my business card, it wasn't really realistic. And the company didn't necessarily like have a ton of fun (laughs) with titles like that. Some companies do. And so maybe I would have ended up with that ninja title. But um, at the time, I started to really think about you know, what was next for me or what made sense or as an apparel department ninja, if that was the role that I wanted to hold, kind of being the hub of our group and helping to reach out to all of the different teams that needed to work with us, how could I officially title myself or how could I officially be better in that role? And that was when I came across project management and I really learned a lot about it. Interestingly enough, my mother-in-law is a project manager. And so I was able to learn a ton from her about the process, about what the role could become. She was a high level project manager in a very different industry, but I could definitely see a relationship between what she was doing every day and what I wanted to be able to do to bring guidance and to bring process and to bring standardization to our group. So I really started looking into it. And at the time I was based here, you know, out of Santa Cruz, California. And even though they were offering a lot of the classes at the time online, I wanted to do something semi-local just in case, you know, there was a classroom opportunity, I could go meet my professor, or if there was a class that we could definitely all get together and maybe even study for exams, that was something that I was really interested in. So I ended up looking up a bunch of different classes that I could take through the Stanford Adult Education Continuing Services, and I ended up finding a couple of different project management basics classes, and I ended up being really, really lucky. I landed in Ms. Deborah Hildebrand's project management basics class, and she was just such an amazing professor, and she was so flexible with everybody's time. We had people in our course coming from all over the world who were trying to learn the basics of project management, and she really broke it down in a way that made a ton of sense and really resonated with me, something that like I didn't just memorize for tests or homework assignments that she was giving me. It's stuff that's really stuck with me throughout the rest of my career and stuff that I'm still applying as I'm working with my clients today. So what what I ended up doing was taking this project management basics class just to kind of learn a little bit about the role. What was project management? Was it something that even made sense to bring into the team that we were working with? And the further and further we got along in the course, like the further and further that I got into my project document, building it all out, understanding how timelines worked, like very, very detail oriented, understanding how budgets work, very, very detail oriented, understanding how to put a project charter together and get everybody to sign up and sign on board. How do you get everybody to give their information so that the project charter is as accurate as possible as it can be when you implement it? All of that really started to resonate with me. It really started to become interesting. I wanted to take it to the next level. So when I finished the course, Deborah ended up encouraging me to move forward and sign up to take the PMP exam. So the project management professional exam has a reputation for being one of the hardest certification exams that you can take. It is a very difficult, very long, very meticulous exam to sit for. And the studying of it is going to be one of the hardest things that you could potentially do as an adult. Now, I wish I had maybe done some of this when I was much younger and I was used to studying like that all of the time, but I studied for 45 days straight. There is a giant textbook that you wanna go ahead and read and you wanna make sure that you're understanding all of the different concepts. There are exam prep books, there are workbooks, there are exercises that you can do. I made like little index card flashcards to make sure that I understood all of the terminology. There were going to be definitions that I needed to know. There were formulas that I needed to know. And so I ended up signing up for an online exam prep class 
that helped me get ready exactly for what the exam was going to throw at me. Are you frustrated by feeling like an outsider in your own industry? You're not alone. I spent years feeling the same way. Are you tired of endless research and you can only learn this stuff by getting a job in fashion advice? Me too. That's why I created the Business of Apparel online course. My years of insider knowledge condensed into video tutorials, demos, and downloads. Learn at your own pace, no fluff. Just key topics like building target profiles and mastering financials. This information is genuinely unavailable anywhere else. Grow your brand, become an apparel industry aficionado, and unlock millions in potential revenue. The value? Over $50,000 with millions potential for your brand. Don't miss out. Sign up for the Business of Apparel online course today at thebusinessofapparel.com slash course. And between watching all of these different videos online through that class, reading the textbook, studying my flashcards, it ended up taking me about six weeks, 45 days to really make sure that I knew my stuff so that when I walked into the room on exam day, I felt really confident to take it. And knowing that not very many people actually pass that exam on the very first time. So, but let me back up here. There are a few things that you need to be able to do before you can even sign up to take the exam. And so there are a few things that I will encourage you to do and really look into before you even decide if you want to go for your PMP certification. And so I'm going to come back over here to the PMI.org website, and I'm just going to kind of go through what are the things that you need to have to be eligible for the PMP exam. So you need a four-year college or university degree, essentially of any kind. Like I have a bachelor's of science in the fine art of fashion design, and that was absolutely 100% sufficient to fulfill that requirement. So I have that four-year college degree, and so that was applied toward my PMP exam ability. The current website says that you also need 36 months of experience leading projects within the past eight years. Now, when I signed up for the exam, I think it was 300 hours. So I had to be able to prove that I had 300 specific hours of project management work under my belt. Like I had already been doing this in different roles. And so I have to be able to, on my application for the PMP exam, list out every single hour that gets me to that 300 mark of exam exactly what I did to reach that mark. And if I haven't hit 300 hours yet, then you probably want to wait and make sure that you hit your 300 hours. You don't want to start studying for your exam yet or sign up for it. You can't even sign up for it if you don't have that mark. And so you want to make sure that you've hit that and that you're driving toward that if you haven't hit it yet. You also need to have 35 hours of education around project management. So the Stanford course that I took, absolutely made me eligible for that part of it. And when I went back through my career and really started looking at some of the work that I was doing as a developer in the apparel industry, I was able to absolutely 100% say like, yes, there is so much of it, this that was project management. And so I got a lot of assistance. I ended up looking up a lot of different information online to help me fill out my exam application. And when you fill out your application, there is this tricky little thing, or at least there was when I filled mine out, that you have a character limit when you fill out every single box that's included in the application form. And so there are some very industry specific abbreviations that you can use to get your character count down so that you can include more information in your application. Now, I really encourage you, if you're at this stage, you're ready to go into the application mode, you feel like you have your, your 36 months or your 300 hours, and you, you're ready to go, I would really start doing some research on what those abbreviations are so that you can use them as much as possible. I used abbreviations all over my application because without it, I wouldn't have been able to thoroughly prove that I had done my project management work. I think there's also a lot to be said about the fact that you are going out doing a lot of specific research about how to fill out this application properly that is going to go a long way for you to be approved to take your exam. 
So one quick thing I do want to mention, I just mentioned the three things that you need to be able to take your exam. As we back up here just a little bit, if you do not have a four-year university or college degree, you can proceed with just your high school or secondary school diploma, but you need to have more months of experience doing project management work. So that ends up being 60 months within eight years, which is five years of project management work that you need to have under your belt and you need to be able to prove that on your exam. So that is a caveat. That is definitely an asterisk that if you don't have your four-year college or university degree, you can still proceed forward, but you need a lot more real world experience as a project manager. So once you've had some education, you've got your 35 hours of education, you have your proof of your 36 months or your 60 months of project management work under your belt, you can go ahead and fill out your application, you'll submit your fees, and then they will review your application and let you know if you've been approved to take the exam. At that point, what you want to do is probably choose an exam date that is about six to eight weeks away from your current date. So you'll go ahead and choose that exam date, and then that's when you really want to start studying. You want to go out and you want to get the textbooks, you want to get the workbooks, you want to make sure that you are practicing and studying in a way that makes the most sense to you. I really liked to learn from a person who was kind of teaching me all of the different jargon while I was supplementing with my reading. And so again, I ended up taking that exam prep course that really helped me. When I went to sit for my exam, it was actually end of February 2020. We were just starting to get information about COVID around the world. Nobody really knew what was going on. We were not locked down yet in the US, but when I sat for my exam, there was someone sitting next to me who was sneezing and coughing the entire time. He probably just had a cold, but because of all the different news and all the information about COVID, I was like mentally freaked out while I was sitting in this exam. Nobody knew exactly exactly what COVID was, how bad it was going to be, what it was going to do to you at the time. And so I'm like sitting there taking this extremely difficult exam, trying to focus, remember all of my different formulas, remember how to do all of the different definitions. And I'm also mentally freaking out about getting this crazy pandemic disease that is about to start hitting the world. And somehow, magically, I got through the exam and it ended up when I hit my final submit button, it comes back and it tells you right away if you passed or not. And I passed on my first time, got my PMP certification, received my certificate in the mail, and it is up on my wall in a frame. It is something that I am really proud of. And being able to apply all of that knowledge to what I knew after taking the exam, after going through all of the different courses, was incredibly helpful to me. And so if you are out there considering whether or not to get a project management certification, if for nothing else, it really just helps you become more organized. It helps you understand how to put together a budget for your business or even for your personal life. It helps you understand how to map out timelines in a way that can get you somewhere really quickly or get you somewhere where every single step is done at the highest quality and it might take time, but you are able to overlap the leads and lags of how everybody's coming together on the team so that you're getting it done on time according to what the leadership in your business needs. Project management to me is the best way to keep everybody on track because it is a little bit formal and it sometimes can feel too formal. I've had some managers, I've had some clients in the past who are just like, like, this is too much. I don't need all of this. But at the end of the day, if you have a process that you are able to follow easily, someone is helping to guide you through that process. You know exactly what needs to be done every single week or every single day to make sure that you're launching on time. You are hitting your deadlines. You are getting product to your customer the way that they need it to be, the way that the market needs it to be, the way that your business needs it to be you are going to find that every single day is just that little bit easier because you had it planned out and you knew. You're no longer running around putting out fires every single day the way that so many of us do in the fashion industry. So I 100% endorse the PMI, PMP certification. It is something that I have actually re-upped since I got my original certification. I went through my continued education training back in 2021. Right after I started the business, I didn't have a ton of clients yet. And so I took that time to get my additional education hours. And so I am now certified through February of 2026. It's about three years at a time. So I was originally certified through 2023, got my additional hours, and it pushed me out to 2026. 
2026. I now need to get a few more hours so that I continue my certification out to 2029 and beyond, but that is definitely something that I am committed to doing because I just believe that it is one of the most important things that we bring to the table as Unmark Street when we work with our clients. Our ability to help them put a process together and know how their team can be working to make them the most effective as possible is something that I really believe puts us above the rest. If you have any additional questions about the course that I took, Deborah Hildebrand, anything else regarding the PMP certification, the exam, how I apply it to our work every single day, please let me know. You can always comment below this video. You can always send me a DM through Instagram. If you're watching on YouTube, please like, subscribe, and comment below this video to let me know what you thought. And if you are listening on audio, I would love to ask you to please leave us a review and share this episode with somebody who might need it. Thank you so much for joining me today and we'll see you next week. Thank you so much for listening to the Business of Apparel podcast. I would so appreciate hearing your thoughts on the show. And if you know someone who could benefit from it, please share it with them. My biggest desire is to help other apparel professionals understand the nuances of our industry so we can all work toward making better product for a better world. If you would like to connect further, I love to invite you to send me a message through my website, thebusinessofapparel.com, where I do weekly trainings through my YouTube video channel, a weekly newsletter, blog articles, and so many more resources to help you start and scale a profitable apparel brand. This podcast is produced by Box 7 Media, who I cannot speak highly enough of. If you're looking to start your own podcast, you can reach out to Jeremy at Box 7 Media on LinkedIn anytime.